Welcome to a whole new year of the APP World Tour. I'm your host, Guy Hagi. Since its start back in 2010 at the Sunset Beach Pro, the APP World Tour has always pushed the boundaries of what's possible in stand-up paddling. From groundbreaking contest formats to exotic locations around the globe, we have all been witness as the sport gave rise to a new breed of water athlete. Join us this year as we get ready to crown both men's and women's world champions for the surfing and racing side of the sport. We spoke with CEO of the APP World Tour, Tristan Boxford, to fill us in on what we can expect in 2018. One of the most spectacular things about stand-up paddling is its pure accessibility. We can go to these major cities, iconic venues, and bring a sport to these environments and show it to the world in a way that's never been done before. The big cities where we can get iconic backdrops, but also access a whole new demographic for the sport. I'm really looking forward to this fresh start. It's exciting to be able to compete on a tour that we're able to go to London, one of the most major cities in the world. I mean, wow, a lot of the events this year are in huge, really, really popular cities, so it's gonna be really exciting to kind of like possibly race around like the Statue of Liberty and go to London, a place I've never been before. The beauty of surf racing is that you can do it on any places. You can do it on the, the ocean, but you can as well do it in, a, in river, on lake, so yeah. With that renewed focus in mind, what better place to start the 2018 APP World Tour than the heart of London in the United Kingdom? Yeah, looking forward to the race in London. Um, I've never actually raced in, in, in England at all, or all the United Kingdom for that matter, so it's always exciting. I've, I've been there as a tourist a couple of times, which is pretty cool, but to actually be racing along the River Thames um, is going to be really exciting. And to be able to paddle on the Thames, I've never done that before, and that should be really exciting, especially, you know, with competing in a city um, with a sport like sand paddling, it will attract like a lot of viewers as well as some amazing athletes. So I think it's kind of a really exciting and a big step for the APP World Tour in the direction they're taking it. So I think we're going to get a lot of attention in the places that we're going. Because I mean, it's going to be midsummer in London and it's going to be a tourist everywhere and I think it's really exciting. Well, the transition for this year has really been all about the city paddle festivals. This is the creation of a spectacle for the pros bringing the best in the world to put on a showcase like no other, while at the same time creating an access point for new people to enter into the sport, experience it for the first time and get out on the water. City Paddle Festivals is about inclusion. It's getting everybody out on the water. What's exciting about the new season here is the fact that it's gonna be you know, an inclusive event. Yeah, it's really exciting that the APP is doing different open races this year for all sorts of people, for kids, and the full demographic of paddling. I think that's really great for our sport and I'm excited that as a professional I get to be there racing alongside these people in the pro division and I get to interact with them. We have the opportunity to share this wonderful sport with so many people and similar to a marathon where you can have the best people in the entire planet racing for the win as well as you know just people who enjoy running a race or doing it to compete against their friends and maybe just doing it as a goal to finish. That is the most exciting part, I think, about this tour, because sharing the love of what we do, water sports, um, I think if everyone did a water sport, like Santa Paula in the world would be a better place, so this is just a start. You know, so it's exciting for me to get the opportunity to, to go and see some of these faces that have come to my hometown and cheer them on in their hometown. It's pretty exciting. We met up with Viking legend Casper Steinfath in London to take a look at what the first stop in 2018 has in store. The one thing for people to look out for this year on the APP tour is gonna to be the locations. It's gonna be the atmosphere, because going to these major cities, you have thousands of people watching, spectating from the side. I think it's super important for the sport of stand-up paddling to bridge connections with major cities. Uh, it's very essential to have a professional platform for the sport. What really is cool about stand-up paddling is that you can bring it to venues like this, like in the heart of a city. It's very special. You can connect both the amateur side and the elite side of the sport. I'm very happy to be working with the APP to create a professional platform. You know, uh, coming into this uh, 2018 season, in the past I've come close to winning the tour before and I've been so close, so my motivation coming into this season is definitely to take it up that last notch. The key word for me this year is quality, 
and I just want to focus on a few good events and pour my heart and soul into it. I'm really stoked that the tour is a little more condensed. It's sort of like how baseball or basketball has a season and I think that's good for the athletes. The four APP World Tour races in um, here in London, in New York, in San Francisco and Paris, they're going to be my top priority and uh, I want to light up some fireworks at all of those stops. So the fact that we have more time to train for these events is incredible. So I'm really stoked and excited to experience this tour in this new sort of platform that has been created. I'm excited for London. Um, I've never been to London, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, obviously London has some, some crazy history. It's, it's another amazing international city. Um, and it's gonna be, I think it's going to be a great place to kick the year off. I think Europe has such a passionate group of people and such a paddling culture um, that we've seen develop over the years. So I think launching uh, APP 2018 in London is the right choice. And I'm really looking forward to get out there. I'm going to bring my family, my friends, and um, we're going to make the most of it. I love Europe, so I can't wait to get back out there. I know what I have to do, and I just hope that everything clicks this year. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm motivated to give it my shot and show the world what Viking power really means. 2018 has been an amazing year for the sport of stand-up paddling. And this week, we wrap up the competition in the City of Lights, Paris, France. But first, let's look back on the year and see just how we got to this point. One of the goals of the APP World Tour was to bring the tour to the major city centers, give the athletes a platform to showcase their talents and attract new eyes to the sport of SUP. We started the year off in London, where we saw Kai Lenny and Shea Foudy dominate the sprints. In the long distance, Shea Foudy would continue her winning streak, and Michael Booth would, once again, showcase his power and dominance in flat water. Shea Foudy and Michael Booth would go on to take top honors in London and prepare to continue their quest for the world title across the pond in New York. New York boasts some of the most iconic landmarks of all time, and for the first time ever, we saw the APP World Tour athletes paddle around perhaps the most famous landmark in the USA, the Statue of Liberty. It was here in the waters of the Hudson that Arthur Arutkin and Candace Appleby would give onlookers a show to remember against a one-of-a-kind skyline that's impossible to forget. The sprints were a hard-fought battle in some of the most difficult conditions we've seen on tour when Mother Nature threw a curveball and Hurricane Florence made landfall during the heats. Not to be discouraged, our athletes took to the sea in spite of the unyielding elements, with Tareen Black and Connor Baxter coming out ahead of their rivals. In the end, top honors for New York went to Connor Baxter and Candice Appleby. Heading to the West Coast, the Pacific Paddle Games, sponsored by Salt Life, has long been regarded as the Super Bowl of SUP. And this year's PPG did not disappoint, as the athletes gave their all to claw their way to the top spot on the podium. In the long distance, longtime standout Fiona Wilde powered her way to the front of the pack. And Lincoln Dews set himself apart as a force to be reckoned with. In the technical race, Candace Appleby once again took the win, this time in her hometown. As expected, the hammer buoy took no prisoners, and we witnessed some of the gnarliest carnage we've seen on tour. of all this talent and athleticism will come to a pinnacle in our next stop. In none other than the City of Light, we caught up with some of our male athletes as they embarked on a friendly race to climb the 324 meters of steps to reach to the top of the tallest structure in Paris, the Eiffel Tower. What's up guys, we're in Paris, it's time to race, but first we have to conquer that baby up there, the Eiffel Tower. Let's go. No one wakes up early here in Europe, so we were walking around at 8 o'clock and there's no one around. Like I had the city to ourself, and now here we are standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, you know, climbing the, the ultimate challenge of the year being the Eiffel Tower. You know, it's, it's going to be a good race, 600 steps to the top. Michael Booth is in phenomenal shape, but you gotta, you can't underestimate Travis. He's the dad role. You know, he has some energy that we other paddlers don't, and he's had a lot of croissants this morning, so uh, my money's on Travis. 
Do we have to run all the way? I think it's gonna be a bit of a leg burner, but it's a good warm up for tomorrow because we haven't, I haven't done any paddling or anything since I've arrived. So um, I think I'm fit enough for oh, yeah. 600 steps, I will say. I think on a personal level, like traveling is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, being able to come to these, these, to these race sites and, and make that my job is fantastic. And we're pretty lucky to have ABP World Tour putting on these events for us. Friday morning in Paris. <laughs> We did make it to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Travis and Michael are going to claim that they won. They're wrong. I got it. Had a blast, but it's freaking scary. Like, here on top of the Eiffel Tower, there's so much wind, and uh, it's kind of humbling to get this crazy perspective on this unique city. But uh, uh, The race upstairs, a bit of controversy. We kept stop, start, stop, start. Uh, that was fun at the top. Uh, it's super windy. Beautiful, cold, concrete jungle out there. Um, now it's time to get something warm, head down, get some lunch. Uh, I love the, I love eating the food here. So awesome, awesome first day here. All right. And that's a wrap. We had a good morning up on top of the Eiffel Tower. Got to uh, get a good view of Paris and the race course coming up this weekend. Awesome time up the Eiffel Tower. It's uh, amazing to be here in this iconic location. Can't wait to race. Uh, thank you, Paris. Thank you, APP, for the uh, morning at the Eiffel Tower. Like so many of our other stops this year, the backdrop of this race was nothing less than iconic. But that didn't stop some of our participants from taking a lighthearted approach to their journey down the sand. So we got 800 plus paddlers on the water here, 800 plus open racers just out here enjoying themselves. It is a brisk 48 degrees. You can probably see most of the paddlers, they're wearing lycra, wetsuits, booties, beanies, even gloves. Some of the most die-hard open racers I've ever seen. But not everyone is here just to take in the sights as the best SUP racers in the world have one last chance to try to lay claim to the world championship crown. And off, off they go. Boothie's going, he's revved up. Wow, what an incredible race by Yuka Sato, all by herself, way out in front. Yeah, Boothie's looking super determined. He's got that gritty face, as he said, him and Connor. Um, so now we're watching the title race unfold right in front of our eyes right here. 10 years to go, Michael Booth is the winner of last race of the IPP World Tour. Yuka Sato takes first in the women's commanding, commanding lead. But we got our world champion, Shay Foudy. Gonna try to get an interview with her. I'm stoked. It was a rough race. I really worked hard on that. I try to play it smart. I try to be strategic, which I usually am not. So um, I'm stoked with my performance in that sense, and obviously I'm really happy to place where I did today. With the excitement and everything, I didn't sleep much, so I was a bit tired at the end, but stoked with my first place on the distance race. Each year on tour, we see new talent making waves. This year was no different, but no one could have predicted that a young, talented racer from California would be able to dominate the tour from the first stop to the last one here in Paris. On her rookie year on tour, Shay Foudy has done that. From her powerful performances in London, Shay never stopped. Finishing off the year like she started, earning her the Women's APP Racing World title for 2018. And we can't wait to see what she has in store for 2019. At the start of the year, Arthur Arutkin made a decision to only focus on his stand-up paddle racing in 2018. In the New York Sup Open, he proved that his training was working for him, taking the win in the Liberty Race. Now here in Paris, he has reached his goal of becoming the 2018 stand-up paddle racing world champion, as well as the first non-Hawaiian to take the crown. Congratulations to Arthur from everyone here at the APP World Tour. 
So congratulations to our sprint and long distance winners and a big congratulations to our new world champions, Arthur Orutkin and Shay Foudy. From everyone here at the APP World Tour, thanks for watching this show. Join us next time as you crown our SUP surfing world champions in Gran Canaria. I'm your host Guy Hagi. Aloha, ahui ho.